You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. It's that time of the week. Again, it is time to commence our broadcast week here on the old Options Insider Radio Network. It is time for episode uno here of the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, the aforementioned network, welcoming you again to a great week in store for you folks out here, all sorts of great stuff. Mr. Scott Nation is coming back to the hot seat tomorrow, so if you're not in the secret club yet, Get in there. It's going to be an, probably a very popular one. <laughs> People are going to get at him with questions. He liked it so much, he wanted to come back. He asked to come back. So there you go. He enjoyed his last foray in the hot seat. Of course, he got options. Boot camp later this week. All your favorites. Vol views on Friday. Oddities and a whole bunch more. And we have to kick it off the way we always do. Well, I should say most of you, 99.9% of you love it. And all, everyone in Secret Club is always playing along. You guys all love it. I forgot who that one guy is who wrote in last week who doesn't like it. So for any of you who don't like the wrestling portion, we do have to kick it off. It's Uncle Mike's favorite thing in the world. He got retweeted by Brutus the Barber Beefcake because of this segment. It was probably the highlight of his adult life. Are you going to deny him that? I ask you that. So the answer is no. We have to keep going. So if you're not a, a fan of Brutus the Barber and his ilk, just, just skip ahead of five minutes. For the rest of you, it is time to name that 80s wrestler. That's your taste. That's your hint, listeners. Going a little bit of a deeper cut this time, as you could probably guess from that music. Let's go around the horn. I think he's still a Twitter. I think he's still a buzz from the liking and retweeting by one Brutus the Barber beefcake. In fact, I do believe he did tweet out a photo of his Brutus the Barber action figure <laughs> over the weekend, just out of sheer excitement. Let's go out now to the land of St. Charles, where we are joined by Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. Hey, Uncle Mike. Welcome back to the program. B, have you recovered from the sheer joy that was the Brutus the Barber beefcake retweet? And C, can you name that 80s wrestler, sir? A, thank you for the welcome. B, 
you know, in terms of how exciting that really was to me, um, this is no joke. So, I mean, just from my past life and past career, I've got to meet a lot of famous NFL players and uh, it, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. And I'm, I, I do a lot of like NFL alumni charity things and things like that. So I get to hobnob with some sometimes big names, sometimes not so big names. But the point is, is that um, that's cool. And I love doing it. I love helping the kids that we help. And it just it's a true joy beyond words. But where I'm going with this is that I, I really I'm somewhat starstruck if I'm talking to a guy that maybe played with Joe Namath or something like that. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. Or if I am meeting a big name person, it's cool. And I like it. It's fun. But I got to say, I'm a little bit starstruck with the fact that I'm really associated with a guy with, with Brutus Beefcake with a big name like that in wrestling. So I think that's really cool and it really made my day. And um, Brutus, if you're listening, oh man, that was, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the 80s wrestling and uh, I, I have the action figure to prove it, if that makes sense. Uh, in terms of today, so C, in terms of today's uh, who this is today, I am not sure it's a deeper cut. So I'm going to take a flyer and I'm going to go with Kane. Interesting. I don't think of him. Did he start in the 80s? Maybe he did. Probably not under the under the Kane gimmick. It's not Kane, obviously, but uh, I'm trying to think when he started. That'd be an interesting question. I will say, though, you are on the right track in terms of villain. I'll give you that much. Let's go on out now to, well, at least most of the time, villain, I suppose. <laughs> All these guys change their gimmicks eventually. Let's go on out now to the land of Texas, where he's right down the street. I think he just finished his tea and crumpets with Mr. Taker. We are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. A, welcome back to the program. B, have you recovered from the reflected joy of being retweeted and liked by Brutus the Barber Beefcake as a result of this segment? And C, can you name that deep-cut 80s wrestling bad guy yeah that that was a deep cut i'm i'm trying to think i've got a couple of ideas in my head one thanks mr beefcake thanks for the retweet two undertaker you can go home now i'm done uh you know i'm done done with my wrestling lesson learned the tombstone today um but i'm i'm near i'm thinking it could be uh the iron sheik or it could be King Kong Bundy. Ooh. Um, let me just say, let me just say, okay, I'm going to give you both a lightning round now to guess it. Let me just say, you were in the right ballpark there when you were talking about Mr. Sheik. Because Mr. Sheik and this guy went hand in hand as the two nemeses. Okay, who is it, Uncle Mike? Nikolai Nic- Volkov. Yes. Nikolai Volkov. Yes. There were two bad guys. There were two anti-American bad guys in the 80s who went toe-to-toe with Mr. Apple Pie America, Sergeant Slaughter himself. And that was the Iron Sheik with his famous camel clus. And the other one was this guy, Nikolai Volkov. And he would come out and he would attack Sergeant Slaughter's Marine Honor Guard. And he would stomp on the flag. And he would sing the Soviet anthem and all sorts of fun stuff. So, yes, he was a fun bad guy and a fun one. And for all of you... Who skipped ahead, you can tune in now because it is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, deep cut for Nikolai Volkov. I don't think he's still with us. Otherwise, he could retweet us as well. But unfortunately, the list of 80s wrestlers who are alive to listen to the show, let alone retweet it and are on Twitter, growing shorter by the day. I know what else is growing smaller by the minute right now. It's volatility. Vol is coming, crashing back to earth after some lofty heights. In fact, it came off more than a point just in the last hour or so before showtime. Coming to the start of the show now, we've got the markets back firmly in the green. Is this real or is this yet another, like the third head fake now we've gotten from this Omicron variant before we get gut punched either later today or tomorrow and the market sells off? Either way, the markets are buying. This uh, this upside today, Dow up over 2%, almost 2.1%. S&P closing in on 1.5%, right around 1.4%. NASDAQ up a little more than three quarters, about point, almost 0.9% actually out there. So a decent run out there, even though tech-heavy NASDAQ obviously lagging a bit. A little bit of damage, a little bit of wreckage out there. All this means Vol is coming back in aggressively. Everything was still up pretty sizably about an hour or so before showtime. A lot of that has come in when we kicked off the show VIX was down to about a 28 and a quarter. That puts it up only about a half a point from where it was 
this time uh, last show, of course, is up a couple of points earlier than that just today. So where did we top out on in the VIX cash this morning? We got up to about 30 even. So, yeah, coming back off it again. So at least for right now, the markets are buying that this is a bit of a return to some hard to say a VIX of a 28 is normal, but a return, shall I say, to some measure of normalcy. V VIX still frothy, though, as you might imagine. I just said VIX came in a point in the last hour. So Vala still frothy. 147 and a half. That's still down about one and a half points from where it was on our last show. We hit a high of nearly 161. Remember, listeners, not too long ago. VXX at about 26 and a half. That's still up, up about three quarters of a point, though. That one came in about close to a point over the last hour or so as well. UVXY giving up the ghost, also giving up almost a full point over the course of the last hour. Looks like that uh, downside put fly I have on UVXY from last week may actually be worth something. We shall see. 21 and three quarters when we kicked off the show. That's actually up still about three quarters of a point from our last show. But again, just giving up a point almost just in the span over the last hour or so. And Vol Q at about a 26 coming into show time. That's up about six tenths of a point. That one also dropped about a point in the last hour. So yeah, Vol starting to uh, nosedive here. Is this for real? We shall see. Speaking of things being for real, listeners, we asked you last week in our question of the week, is this legit? Is this going to have some legs? This VIX thing, I should say, in terms of closing above or below 20. Last week, you guys pretty much all went with the below 20, over two thirds of you. Obviously not the right choice. We thought, let's punt. Let's do that one again. Let's try for this Friday. Same question. Will VIX close above or below 20? And as of right now, right before showtime, it's looking firmly in the above 20 camp. Go figure. Nearly 81% saying above 20, 19% saying below 20. It's pretty much the polar opposite of what the voting was this time last week. But hey, the week is young. We got a week to go here. So get your vote in there at options if you have not already. And let's go around the horn since he did get it on his second try. Let's go back out to the list of Mike's. Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud, A, do you have any enduring memories of Mr. Nikolai Volkov? And B, let's lighten up your tape on this. Uh, are you buying this rally, sir? Is this real? All right. Well, first off, in terms of Nikolai Volkov, you know, it's a, I just remember growing up seeing the Iron Sheik always saying, Iran number one, Russia number one, USA, Hakpu. And that was one of the things that I remember about that tag team. Uh, I also remember the feud they had with the U.S. Express, uh, Barry Windham and Mike Rotondo. Uh, Barry Windham and Mike Rotondo, those were, uh, before I discovered the Road Warriors, they were my favorite tag team. And You had some esoteric uh, tastes as a child. Mike Rotondo was part of your favorite tag team. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, it was the U.S. Express, Barry Windham, Mike Rotondo. They used to come into Born in the USA. Um it was it was a feature match at WrestleMania one, and so uh, definitely loved watching that and uh, just watching that feud. A lot of great memories, and then ironically, uh, my saddest memory as a kid was when Brutus the Barber Beefcake blinded Barry Windham one night, uh, and then uh, it was uh, that I, I think I literally did cry as a kid when I thought Barry Windham was really blind, but then he recovered from the blindness from uh, how Bruce the Barber <laughs> Beef came. It was when Bruce, it was before he became the barber. Um, so that was back when he was a bad guy before he, he turned good. Now, so who, I, I, who would I, imagine I, 30 odd years later as an adult, you would be overjoyed by being liked and retweeted by that same person who blinded your childhood hero, sir. It's very ironic how things work in the United States of America, isn't it? So anyway, those are my memories of uh, Nikolai Volkov, uh, him and the Iron Sheik together. And uh, he was really a bad dude when you listen to him. <laughs> and he, he seemed like a very bitter Russian person whenever you'd listen to him. So uh, the man was definitely good at what he did, that's for sure. And, uh, in terms of this market being good at what it does, uh, eh, what the heck, we're up another percent and a half almost on the day. Why not? Uh, so we have uh, it's a lot of rallying going on, and this just seems like par for the course. We, we have just a lot of movement going on today. If, if you're a, a day trader who often uses tight stop losses and gets in and out a lot, you're probably doing well these last few weeks. Uh, so this is that type of a market at this point in time. Uh, we're still pretty high in volatility. Uh, we have uh, the VIX uh, still in the mid-27, so excited to hear the greasy meatballs take on that when uh, he gets the microphone here in a minute. Uh, so watching that, uh, also watching, we're getting a little bit of a sell-off in the 10-year note. And so uh, we're still fairly, we're, we're like in the middle of a range right now with a 10-year note. And so for premium sellers, that can be an exciting thing. But for those that are trying to um, 
ride a rally or make or short it so it goes down is probably a very frustrating thing. Uh, so still watching that, where it's at with things. Uh, the 10 year note volatility, I mean, I, I'm personally excited about that because I've been a pretty consistent premium seller in that over or 10 year note esque tre- uh, securities, I should say. I'm, I'm using IEF a lot um, and at times using other things at times as well. Uh, but still watching with where it's going. Uh, also the other unique thing about this rally right now is that the cues are kind of the dog of this. Uh, one of the things that's really moving, we have the Dow up over 2% on the day. Um, a lot of that is, has to do, of course, we have XLE energy stocks as well as financials up over 2%. Uh, but the cues, uh, that's kind of the dog, the cues itself is not even up a percent. I mean, come on, what are you doing here? Technology, get with the program. Uh, so that's another thing that's kind of interesting about this. And uh, the other thing that I was hearing about, uh, there's something that there's this other thing that goes on that everyone likes to talk about. Uh, what is, oh yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's getting the crap kicked out of it right now. And a lot of that did happen over the weekend. Uh, so this wasn't just something that happened at the open at 8, 8.30 this morning. Uh, this is something that was going on over the weekend for sure. And uh, once again, I, I had another Bitcoin, uh, spotting of Bitcoin uh, that wasn't in the right spot. Uh, my son's football banquet, uh, the, the head football coach was talking about how like he liked his staff and that type of thing. He was saying, yeah, uh, this guy on my stage, he's kind of introducing his staff and he's saying, yeah, this guy's my good friend. We talk, we talk about this. We talk about that. We even talk about cryptocurrency. And so I'm convinced that the second he said that is when Bitcoin started going lower. So anyway, that's just another thing when you hear people talking about cryptocurrency that are uh, not in that world, a lot of times it's not a good sign for the bulls, just kind of like when uh, your your barber and your cab driver start talking about stocks. It's usually not a good sign for the stocks. And uh, that was my indicator for uh, this past weekend. And that's what I have going on today. We'll get more, of course, into crypto a little bit later today. Got a great guest helped me do that at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern on the crypto rundown. But you're right, Bitcoin back below 50K listeners. Where will it bottom out? Let's find out. We'll talk about all that fun stuff, the vol, the volume, the OI, the skew, all kinds of craziness going on. In a little bit later out there, now let's go back to the land of Tejas. Where is he buying what this market is selling? Is he buying some uh, downside on the vol side? Let's find out. Mr. Meatball, sir. What's lighting up your tape? And also, do you, if you have an enduring memory to kick things off, Mr. Volkov, have at it. And then B, more importantly, what's lighting up your tape in this day when the market's giving back some ball, sir? I always liked Nikolai Volkov. I liked him when he when he teamed up in the Bolsheviks. That was one of my favorite tag teams. I always liked watching them. Oh, yes, yeah, the Bolsheviks. I forgot about them. <laughs> they were at, yeah, that, that was another one. I, I, I always enjoyed watching them lose. Um, and then, uh, but... Let's talk about uh, this market. And yeah, you know, the Dow and the Russell are both up north of 2%. The S&P up one and a half, you know, one and, th- one and a third. And yeah, the NASDAQ's the laggard. Why? Well, we continue to see some strength in the non-volatile or less vo- lesser volatile portions of the NASDAQ. That's Apple. Uh, money has been pouring into, you know, Apple. Microsoft continues to be strong. Uh, we got some strength in Amazon and Google. We still see weakness in Tesla and in all kind of the secondary names of the NASDAQ. AMD, the chips are getting smoked today. Uh, AMD is down 5%. Uh, NVIDIA, which is a huge component of the NASDAQ, is down 3.7%. Tesla is down, although back above 1,000, uh, but it was b- well below 1,000 earlier today. Uh, so. Uh, ARK funds, is ARKK, they're, they've had nothing but a disaster of a month. Uh, if you want to know why vol is so high and why the market has been a disaster, uh, take a look at that ETF, and that can tell you where the softnesses have been. And it's been in growth names. We've seen all the growth stocks, all the low, re- low revenue, low earnings, high future earnings potential names get absolutely smoked and then that money pour into energy and mining and uh utilities and 
you know, a little bit of the uh, economy opening up trade also coming on today, which again also is going to affect that entire sector. Uh, Zoom Communications has been uh, under assault. GameStop uh, is had an absolute crushing AMC, Robinhood, uh, all those names have just been uh, absolutely destroyed in this market while we've seen a flight to quality. And uh, the final piece is we are getting a bit of a respite on Chinese names today. Baba up 8% uh, and some of the, the big, huge Chinese names uh, are seeing some bullishness, but then we see softness in names like you know, the automakers like NEO and, X, and you know, XPEB and some of these names don't look as strong. So China having a bit of a bounce, that's bailing, bailing things. But until that ARK ETF starts to turn positive for a couple of days in a row, we are going to continue to see this kind of volatility. Yeah, I guess it just goes to show if you want to go buy Tesla, go buy Tesla yourself. Don't, don't have somebody else buy it for you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Arc yes. right now, not looking uh, not looking the best at about a little bit. 94 is bouncing off the low. I think it looks like it hit the low of recently of 89. Of course, they got up to in uh, February of this of this year, they got up to 156, actually got almost got up to 160. So hasn't been cut in half, but from 160 down to 89, you're getting pretty close at that point. So, yeah, not exactly a a bull period out there for the quote unquote arc innovation ETF. Let's see what's lighting it up out there in terms of the broad market. Go figure. There's some paper on the tape today, listeners. VIX leading the dance out here. 651,000 contracts on the tape. That that sounds like a lot. It's because it is. And B, the ADV is 611, which is already high. That's ticked up a couple hundred thousand in the past couple of weeks. That was threatening to break 400K in the wrong direction not that long ago. Now it's up to 611, and we've already hit 651 today. So you're probably threatening another 1M a day. Out there in Vixland, we'll get to it more, of course, on Volviews later this week. Spy at three and a half million contracts already. The ADV is closing in on five and a half million out there. The S, 1.11 million contracts. That's pretty robust. The ADV, a little bit over 1.6 out there. The Q is about 1.16. So the Q's and the S keep in pace, at least from a volume perspective. Uh, the ADV in the Q is up to one and three quarters million. Get this. Small caps, IWM, till today, they were pretty much in a correction. They were off about 10% from their highs set back in November. A rally ho mode today, and the ADB has exploded. The ADB is over a million now in IWM. It was just about half that or so. Not that long ago. It was about 533 or something like that, about a month and change ago. And just this massive explosion we've seen in small caps and then now equally aggressive move to the downside in small caps has set that that adv just on fire 1.02 million is the adv in iwm right now and sir already today nearly half of that 454,000. i'm not sure how long they can sustain that m handle on their adv that's a lot of paper but uh, intriguing stuff we shall keep an eye on it as we move on out to these single names a little bit lighter out there today, actually, in the single names, which is interesting. Only cost you 266,000 contracts to break into the top 10. Lately, that's been over 300K most days out there, 320, 350, somewhere in that range. Today, only 266. That gets us to Disney, which is feeling its oats today, up four, a little over four bucks, right around 150 right now, up nearly 3%. So a nice pop here for the Diz. Uh, carrying uh, some life back into that stock that's been uh, beaten up a wee bit of late. Let's see, Disney topped out at 176 back on November 8th, and they've just been in pretty much free fall ever since. They got down to, looks like, 142. So they've had a nice little rebound over the past couple of sessions, but they got down to 142. Uh, interesting stuff out here in Disney, and again, good for 266,000 contracts. Number nine, it's AMC, one half of our symbol Twinology. 273,000 contracts for them. Number eight, it's NEO. Today that ends in Y. NEO probably going to be in there somewhere. Today it's at number eight, 321,000. Number seven, it's Ford, a new perennial top tenor. Not too long ago, no one gave a crap about Ford. Now all of a sudden, it's a hot name. It's lighting up the tape, and it's lighting up our top 10 most actives at number seven today, 329,000 contracts. Number six, it's Baba. Are they going to be delisted? Who knows what the hell is going to happen out there with these Chinese names? There's craziness afoot over there but it's good for 340,000 contracts today in number six number five it's lucid 427 there's got to be some ev names there in the top 10 as well we got neo now we got of course 
a lucid 427,000 contracts for number five. Number four, the other half of our freshly minted symbol twinology. AMD, 459,000 contracts. Number three, it's NVIDIA. Again, chips. What more do you need to say? Half a million contracts, 507,000 to be precise. Number two, it's Tesla. As the meatball said, back below 1,000 briefly. Got down to about 960, I think, before rebounding in this latter stage of the rally here. Now back up over 1,000. Good for 921,000 contracts. That is nothing to sneeze at out there. But it's only good enough for number two. Because the big dog's back on top. Apple, 1.45 million contracts. That's that's an impressive amount. Also, Apple looking impressive today. Up nearly 3%, 2 and 3 quarters percent, 166 and about a quarter. That's got to be at or right about a new all-time high. for. It looks like they hit 167 and change briefly this morning. I do believe that's pretty much, if not pretty close to, a new all-time high here for Apple. So Apple bucking the trend and saying, you know, Omicron, what Omicron? We're in rally ho mode. Let's see what other modes we've got in front of us here. From an earnings volatility perspective, yes, there still are some names popping off. You know where to go to dig deep into all this and perhaps get a glimpse into the earnings cycles and seasons and reports of the future. Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey to the dark side, listeners. You've got four reports to sink your teeth into. Earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season and now the newly minted earnings trade reports for you folks over there. This week, we still have some names popping off. Like I mentioned, Dave and Buster's tomorrow. Campbell Soup. It's that time of year, folks. Campbell Soup time, as well as Vera Bradley. If you like your very uh, loud floral prints, <laughs> you'll be into that one. GameStop. Oh, who would care about GameStop? A flagging game retailer. <laughs> Thursday, we got Hormel Foods, the other side of that. Campbell, Campbell Twinology there. Uh, Lululemon, ah, yes, they of the infamous sheer yoga pants. Chewy, Costco, Broadcom, and Oracle. Let's hit a couple of these. Like you mentioned, Dave and Buster's on the 7th after the bell. They're at 30 bucks and change. They're pricing in 378 In the past, they moved buck 83 so more than double their previous straddle. Interesting. I guess this new Omicron variant perhaps uh, leaving some question marks about their very much in-person business model. Chewy. On the ninth after the bell, 6270 is where they were trading as of this report. They were pricing in 860 in the past. They've moved. Oh my goodness, 386. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say. Wow. They're bringing some ball to Chewy. Costco. Let's see. On the ninth after the bell, 528.93. They were pricing in nearly 19 bucks. In the past, they've moved a little bit less than 12. Again, wow. They're looking for some ball turnaround here. Lulu, 435.72. They're on the ninth after the bell as well. 35.85 is what they were pricing in. The past they've moved 30 bucks. So more vol. Not quite as aggressive as some of those others, but still a lot more vol. And Oracle on the ninth after the bell as well. 88 and a quarter is where they were as of this report. They were pricing in nearly five bucks in the past they moved 440. So also more vol. Not quite as aggressive as the other names, but still impressive. So yeah, more vol. Wow. Haven't seen that in a while, listeners, but that's what we're seeing right now. Is that an indicator of where we are in the earnings cycle? Well, let's see. Again, this season holding firm at 99%. We're just a tick away from breaking even. Again, when's the last time we could say that? Well, it was before the pandemic kicked off, listeners. So that's impressive in and of itself. And two weeks this cycle, two weeks actually outperforming over 100%. Again, have not seen that in quite a long time. So this cycle was indeed living up to everyone's prognostication that it was going to be a banger. And it looks like so far... That is the case, and it ain't done yet. And you want to see the earnings trade reports? What are Matt and his team up to buying and selling straddles and buying and selling calendars? Check out that report for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com. Meanwhile, we got to keep on rolling. It is time to get weird, to get wild, to get funky. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's kick off the weird, the wild, the whimsical portion of the show. Let's unleash our eye of Sauron. See where it fixes its gaze. Looks like we're going back to China, listeners. 
with another ADR. This one, Thin Evolution Group. <laughs> I just like that name. Ticker symbol, Finv. F-I-N-V. They own Blue Bottle Limited and a bunch of other things. The name would imply some sort of fintech. But I'll have to dig in and see what all these different uh, holdings are here. But if we all know, again, the sordid tale that has been Chinese ADRs over the past couple of months. Let's see what this name's been up to over the last year. A year ago, it was trading $2.28. So it had a nice run. It caught the meme wave hard earlier this year. By February 16th, it was trading seven eighty five, And then it almost immediately gave it up. Right back down to four and a half. Not quite back down to two, but gave up a lot of it there by March 8th. And then just the mother of all rebounds here, right back up by March, let's see, March 11th. It was it went from 452 on March 8th by March 11th. was trading about 1061. It's 52-week high for the year, listeners. And then it kind of gave it up again to 788 on, let's see, March 15th. And then by April 15th, it was trading six bucks again. So... This thing had many fits and starts, but it wasn't done yet. It rallied again right up to about that same level, a little bit shy of 10 bucks on June 17th, and then it was finally done. Then it petered out. It started selling off by August 20th. It was back down to 577. It's kind of been bouncing in this mid fives to mid sixes range for pretty much the latter portion of the year, and it's been selling off, looks like now, ever since November 16th when it topped out to 678. Kind of been selling off ever since. Back to where we find it now. On the lower portion of that uh, later range, again, down to 526. Still, again, more than double where it was a year ago. So it's still a good year, but well off the highs it hit of north of 10 bucks several times this year. So what did our Eye of Sauron find out here? Is it going to be puts? Actually, no. Looks like we are blasting away at some calls, listeners. We're pretty decent size, too. Nearly 12,000 of the June seven halves going out pretty far. To the seven half strike, crushing those. These things were 20 cents at 45, and they got them off for 27 cents. I guess that's okay. Doesn't seem, I mean, again, seven half strikes, so you're talking over $2 out of the money. You're going out to June. That's a long time to give up your upside for 27 cents. But hey, it's a 62 and a half vol, so it's nothing to sneeze at. The stock was pretty much exactly right here when these went up. Looks like the next earnings are going to be in March, so they get at least one cycle in this, maybe two, depending on when the June announcement is. But they get at least one earning cycle in this. And they came back. They liked it a lot because they came back and did more. A total of about 17,000 had gone up by the time we started the show. So someone's drawn that big, big line to the upside this time in Finva saying seven half strike. You get above that. I'm happy getting the heck out of Dodge. Let's see. It was 678 not that long ago. But it's got you got to go back all the way to looks like. July of this year, July 22nd was the last time it was over seven and a half bucks, 770. So you got to go back a little bit of a ways, but it can get there. Mr. Meatball, what's your take on this pretty sizable covered call palooza here in everyone's favorite Chinese ADR, Finva? Yeah, you know, I when you see a stock get smoked like this one has, uh, you know, I'm not completely surprised to see traders stepping in and wanting to do a, a bit of an overwrite here. Um, and you know, it, it makes some sense to me. You're getting a decent amount of premium on it. Uh, and you know, if you get taken out, you're getting north close to an, uh, 50% return, uh, to June. That's not so bad for, uh, for a trader. And if not, you can take this in and sell it again. If, if, uh, if the stock doesn't rally, but seems to be a bit of, uh, someone starting to draw, some lines in the sand, maybe in a little different way uh, by executing this trade. A little bit of a line in the old upside sand. And yeah, Finva was right. They are in the Chinese fintech. They're in the micro lending side. Sounds like they're a big player in oh, can't Chinese micro. Yes. <laughs> what can go wrong there? Chinese micro lending. But our friend here, he's happy to get the heck out of Dodge at seven and a half. Can't say I blame him. I don't hate these either. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I'm kind of lukewarm on it overall. But again, not bad. You can't scoff at him for getting 62 and a half vol here at the end of the day we'll come back to these meanwhile let's go out i guess we got fin related covered calls on the brain at least the eye of sauron does today because our next name is a similar trade and a similar ticker we're going from finva to qfin ticker symbol qfin this is 360 digitech 
This is a newcomer to the odd block here. This is a data-driven, technology-empowered digital platform. That means nothing, but uh, they do enable financial institutions to provide better and targeted products and services to a broader consumer base. Sounds like maybe they're a cloud-slash-marketing platform for for fintech firms. Either way, QFIN here trading 20 and about three quarters. A year ago, they were trading 1185. They kept selling off until it looks like about late December when they hit their low for the year of uh, 1034, right before the year kicked off. And we all know what happened in January. Things just took off into February. This thing took off as well. Got up to 31. So it went from $11 to 31. December 29th was 11 bucks, 10, actually 1030. And then $31 on February 16th. So I had a nice pop. Kind of bounced down, got back up there again, 33 and a half this time in March 18th, sold off again to 21 on May 13th, and then took off hard on June 17th, got up to its high for the year of about 45 bucks, hung out there for a nice glorious week, and then got clipped again down to 26 bucks on July 8th, sold off again to 17 on August 18th, and it's kind of been bouncing in this mid-teens to low 20s, actually got up to 28 on November 16th, so high 20s. And then it rallied from 20 and a half on November 5th to 28 bucks exactly on November 16th. And ever since then, it's been selling off again back to where we find it right now. 20 and three quarters out there. And let's see what's it actually rallying today, though, up 71 cents today. So it was at about 20 bucks. It actually broke the 20 handle earlier this morning. It was down to 19 and a half. So had a nice little pop today. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found. Like I said, it was once again, we're on fin related covered call streak today. We got the uh, May 25s going up for $2.92. Ooh, this is not quite meefy, but it's threatening that territory. Definitely meaty. Some might even say beefy. 4,206 of the May 25 calls. Again, that's a lot of juice. for that's, You don't have to May, though. That's a long time. Three bucks almost for these things. They were 270 at 370 so buck-wide market. <laughs> these went up. Let's see. The stock was... A little bit higher. Stock was 2109 when these bad boys went up. And it is, what is the vol here? 81, almost 82 vol on these bad boys. So it's a fair amount of juice, as you could probably reasonably intuit from that decent amount of premium out there. Also worth noting, someone, again, we got this upside call trade going up. About 15 minutes before, we did see a pretty sizable, what looks like a short put roll also going up. And it wasn't the exact same size, but there were two sizable prints going up within 10, 15 minutes of each other. So worth noting, it was the Feb 25 short put. They rolled it 7,800 times from Deese. They bought them back in December for 470, sold them out again in February for 570. So they did that roll for a buck out to February. If they were doing both, they got the nice 25 stupid, really a time stupid, 25 put short in February. And then they made 25 call in uh, in may that would be a weird one if that was the case but we wanted to bring that up as well two sizable prints going up within about 15 minutes of each other i don't think they don't seem like they're related it would be an odd choice but nonetheless mr meatball what's your thoughts on this again another sizable covered call in a fin related name and if you have any thoughts on the short put role as well have at it sir yeah again you know we've seen a lot of these names get smoked uh covered calls are a pretty Nice entry strategy, uh, reducing costs, uh, makes some sense. The t- trade makes a lot of sense to me. So what you're saying, if I read between the lines, is that this was you? It was not me, uh, but it does make some sense. This is going to be your new ETF. It's going to be Arc Z, and it's going to be buying these uh, crappy fintech. That's what it's going to be. I, I, I love, get it. There's nothing I love more than, Ar- than Arc-related funds. No systemic risk there at all. None. But if you think the bottom is in, that's the place. That's the a good, an interesting way to step in. I, I suppose that that is one one interesting way. If, if that fund is still around in a while, but that's another conversation for another day. As we keep on rolling, let's go out to to our final name. We're going to do a bit of a review because that well is overflowing. Listen, we have so many trades to keep an eye on. All right, Saron's going to break, so it's already smoking. So before it breaks, let's pull some out. Let's go back to October 28th, listeners. Again, covered call Palooza. This time was a covered call we talked about in Alto Ingredients, ticker symbol Alto, A-L-T-O. I won't tell you where it's trading because that's a bit of a spoiler right now. But at the time, we profiled 5,000 of the no fives going up 
for 43 cents. Paper crushing them, not pretty close to the bid. They were 40 cent bid at the time. It was about a 63, almost 64 vol. The stock was five and a quarter when these went up. So these were already in the money. Uh, so they decided they wanted, I guess, to, to dump some stock. Uh, there were earnings coming up within about a week. Their earnings were on November 2nd. So it was a pretty aggressive trade, all things considered. We saw them come back to do more. A total of 7,000 traded on the day. So they really liked this one. And then they uh, they came back, it was like a couple of days later after this one. Someone came back and did another 7,000. Uh, but the OI didn't change that much. The OI went up to about, was already up to about 7,000 after that first day of trading. And after the next 7,000 went up a couple of days later, OI only changed by about 2,500. So that was a lot of back and forth probably driven by the earnings. And then we fast forward to the actual expiration later that month, November, and the stock closed at $5.11. So pretty darn close to where it was when they sold the calls to begin with. And there were 10,000 of these calls now open at expiration. So the OI had actually grown since this trade went up. Looks like someone decided to get the heck out of Dodge at the last minute on expiration. The stock was actually whipping around before it closed at 511 because they bought 2,500. So it would be half of that initial print we saw. They bought back 2,500 of these five calls for 26 cents back when the stock was 522. So they decided... They didn't want to dump all that stock. Sounds like after all, they got the heck out of Dodge for 26 cents. So if that was the same person, again, it's kind of hard to interpret and match up OI with OI. We don't know for certain. If that was the same person, then he pocketed a whopping 17 cents on half of his trade. So you're talking about 42 grand, <laughs> all things uh, considered out there. Not the biggest of prints. And obviously, he let some of his stock go because the stock did close in the money for his options. Mr. Meatball, sir. Bit of a saga on these no fives. Alto kind of bounced around that range for a while. Ended up closing in the money and looks like they took off maybe half of them. It could have been somebody else taking these off as well. A lot of paper went up on this strike, but anything to add here on these uh, Alto covered calls that ended up expiring in the money, sir? Well, um, you know, they, uh, they probably did okay on them if they, if they, did covered calls and then and then bought the stock because the stock did kind of converge toward that five dollar strike. Um, surprised they're not in there at it again, uh, putting on the same trade. Well, you know who is in there at it again, listeners. It's Uncle Mike. So let's get to him. A little bit of the old strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for. The Strategy Block. All right, listeners, when he's not basking in the reflected glow of 80s wrestlers, he is out there on various platforms, Twitter, YouTube, his website, dispensing options, wit, and or wisdom. Uncle Mike, sir, what options, wit, and or wisdom do you have to dispense for us today? Today, I want to go through option time frame selection because I think it's pretty important right now, <clears throat> given the volatility environment with which we are in. So let's say that I just kind of want to go through the way that I like to look at things uh, when selecting a time frame. Should I buy or sell a one month option? Should I buy or sell a leap or what in between? Or how do you do that? And I want to give everyone kind of a basic starting point of the way with which I do things. So let's say that volatility is lower. And by lower, only you can determine if volatility is lower or not. Uh, this is uh, a quote directly from the Viceroy. It's something that he taught me very early in my uh, trading slash investing career. Volatility is not high or low unless you think it is high or low. It's something the Viceroy taught me years and years and years before the option block was even a thought in anybody's head. And so what I mean by that is that sometimes you'll see people saying volatile, implied volatility is low on this one right now. Well, it may or may not be, just like Apple might be high right now, or it might be low because it might double tomorrow. You never know. So I want to clarify that before I get into this. Volatility is only high if you think it's high, and volatility is only low if you think it's low. Same way with a stock. A stock is only high if you think it's high, and a stock is only low if you think it's low. So let's say that volatility is low. Well, oftentimes when vol is low, what I like to do on, in situations to where I am an option buyer, 
I like to extend my time frame out a little bit further. And the reason is, is that that means the I like it because by buying an option further out, I've locked in that lower volatility for a longer period of time. If normally I would buy um, a three-month option, then I'd perhaps think of buying a five- or six-month option because the volatility is lower and it's cheap enough to where I feel that it justifies going out further. And I want to take advantage of that. I want to have more time because I want to take advantage of that lower volatility. Now, let's say that I'm an option seller. And if I'm an option seller, let's say that I think volatility is high. Now, with that being said, what if I think volatility is low and I'm an option seller? Well, then um, I, I would either not be an option seller or I would go with a normal time frame and just accept the fact I'm not going to get as much premium. I wouldn't go further out. I wouldn't go closer in uh, as an option seller when volatility is lower. So let's say that I think volatility is higher and I'm an option seller. And once again, if I'm an option buyer and I think volatility is high, I would create a spread or I would do something along those lines to where I wouldn't necessarily be a buyer per se if option volatility was high. So once again, vol's higher. I like to go out for a little bit of a further time frame. And the reason is, is that I've then locked in that higher time value. Now, of course, you if God were to tell me that volatility is going to stay high forever, uh, then I would sell near-term volatility all the time. But unfortunately, God does not give me option volatility future predictions. I don't get those directly from God, unfortunately, so I have to do my own analysis. So if I think vol's high and I think vol's going to go lower, then I typically like to go out a little bit further. If I would normally sell a one-month option, I might go out two months. If I would normally sell a two-week option, I might go out a month, or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of the way with which I like to look at it. If I'm an option buyer and I think that volatility is high, well, then, of course, I'm going to create, a, and I still want to get into the trade, I would create some type of a spread. Uh, I would do things along those lines, but I wouldn't necessarily do a time frame adjustment. But if I'm a buyer and I feel that vol is lower, then I might go out a little bit further in time for where I would buy that option. Now, let's say I'm an option seller. And if I'm an option seller and I think volatility is low, I wouldn't necessarily do a time frame adjustment. I might adjust it to where I might go a little bit closer to the strike price or I might uh, create some type of a spread of some sort. I, I would do something like that as an adjustment, but I wouldn't make a time frame adjustment. If I think volatility is high and I'm an option seller, then I would go out for a longer time frame typically to take advantage of the volatility being higher. And by if I think it's high, then that means I think it's going to go lower. And so it's for that reason that I would go out a little bit further in time. And that is the strategy block on option time frame selection. Uh, first one in December. Thank you for that, Uncle Mike. Let's keep on rolling. Got a little bit of time here, so let's go out to the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, let's check in really quickly on our question of the week. And yeah, it's, it's trending a little bit more favorably towards below 20. It's almost up to 30%. It's about 28% saying below 20 now and 72% saying above 20. I believe we were at 80 odd percent at the start of the show. So some votes coming in for below 20, an aggressive bunch. We shall see. Let's go out to the mailbag now. Doug. Doug's been waiting patiently. By the way, before we get to Doug, we got uh, Nichols in the chat saying Alto from the Usual Activity. Isn't that dog food? No. <laughs> I think you're thinking of Alpo there, Nichols, but close enough. I appreciate I appreciate the commentary. Let's go back to Doug here. Doug says, hi, Mark. Thanks to you and your friends for making options podcasts that provide significant value to us listeners. Well, you're welcome, Doug, and I'll have to pass along your thanks to all of my friends. He says, often on your podcasts, you refer listeners to optionsinsider.com news and articles as a means for us to gather our own reports, such as earnings reports. Unfortunately, I am either ignorant or too dense to find current reports. 
<laughs> Although I attempt to do so regularly. <laughs> All right. Well, you're being hard on yourself there, Doug. And he, he lists how he's having trouble finding them. Any guidance you can find, provide is greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Doug. Well, Doug, first off, again, don't be so hard on yourself. I think the first mistake you make is you forgot the the. We are the options insider. Dot com. That's your first mistake. Now, once you get there, you're going to go to the website. By the way, you, you should be visiting the website if you haven't been there in a while. Listening. There's a lot of fun stuff there. You'll see right on the homepage there, you'll see a bunch of tabs at the top. First on the homepage is going to show you all the most recent episodes of the shows that we've put out. So you can see that also as our calendar for what you can listen to live if you're in there on the Secret Club there. Are links to all of our various shows down there. So if you want to get out the show's main line for everyone out there who's always asking us, hey, I can't find episode whatever of this show. I want to go back to a particular show and start at the beginning. What's the easiest way to do that? This is the easiest way to do that. Our website or our mobile app. Those are the two best ways to get at all of the archives without any sort of middlemen, the iTunes store, anything else getting in your way. But if your case here, Doug, you want to go over one tab from the shows tab, you want to go to the options, news and articles tab. Once you click on that, you will see all the stuff that I'm talking about here. A bunch of tabs. You see the most active options. We also put out most active runs throughout the day. So we'll tell you what's the most active options that are trading right now, the middle of the day and at the end of the day. We do that twice a day for you folks over there at the website as well. So you can check that out for yourselves. See what the hot tickers are every day over there. Then next to that, you'll see a tab that says earnings reports. And that's where you should be clicking to get all your latest earnings, move reports, earnings, move results, earnings, trades, all that stuff. They're all listed by date here. You'll see December 2nd, December 6th, and so on and so forth here. So check those out over there. The options. Don't forget the, the, the options insider.com. Then it's just the options news an articles tab there at the top of the site, and you'll be good to go. Meanwhile, we have to go on into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, let's do it. Let's go around the block while he's not busy dancing on Kathy Wood's grave. He is looking at some ball out there. Mr. Meatball, what are you keeping an eye on until the next time we can gather here together on Thursday? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to see whether uh, our friend Kathy's fund can find some footing and some of these names catch a bid. Uh, I'm also watching the transpos. They are having quite a day today, and I want to see whether... Uh, you know, names like Jets and uh, can move higher. Uh, finally, bonds are, have really fallen off while we've been talking. They are they're dropping like a stone. And I want to see whether whether we're starting to see some of the uh, the risk off nature come out of this market. Uh, would love to see the VIX drop uh, further today. I mean, it's still almost 27 uh, given the, the from high to low, we were talking about maybe 250 points. Uh, VIX got a little overheated, so I'd like to see how much that uh, that steam can come off. Yeah, you're right. It has dropped almost another point while we've been talking here on the show, a little bit shy of the 27 handle right now. Does it have more to go? We shall find out. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until we gather here together on Thursday? Also keeping an eye on the 10-year note. Uh, watching where that's going, uh, as well as seeing uh, right now, we just crossed uh, during the show, actually, uh, a key number, 4,600 on the SPX. So curious if we can continue to hold that, uh, with where we're going with things. Uh, so watching that, and then just also watching this relationship between technology and uh, a lot of the Dow stocks and the financials to see if um, technology can jump on board to this rally more than they have. All right, everybody. Unfortunately, that music means we have come to the end of this journey. But don't worry. We got another journey coming up in about exactly an hour. We're kicking off all the stuff Uncle Mike hates, which is the crypto rundown. He doesn't tune into that show. But you certainly should have got a great guest joining me over there, Edmund McCormick from D-Chain, to break down some craziness in the world of crypto and a whole bunch more. That's kicking off in about exactly an hour here. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, I know you're not listening to the Crypto Rundown. So if folks want to hit you up and talk 80s wrestling or anything else, where should they go? What should they do? 
If you want to talk with a financial advisor uh, who has traditional training in terms of retirement planning, but yet uses the option product as well, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T O S A W. And uh, check out my YouTube channel at St. Charles Wealth Management on YouTube. Uh, there's one video on there. One is a call option, but my goal for 2022 is to get 50 more of them up there. Uh, so I'm out there. Come see me. We'd love to talk with you. Check them out, stcharleswealth.com, or give them, a, give them a like, give them a follow, give them a subscribe on the old Twitters or indeed the YouTubes. Mr. Meatball is all over the place as well. Mr. Meatball, where should they go if they want to learn more about all things Gam Darcy? Yeah, go to OptionPit.com and uh, make sure you're reading our blogs every day. Uh, we got a big prezo on uh, candlestick trading coming up on Thursday. Make sure you are signed up and joining our uh, fun live event Thursday at 8 Eastern time. There you go. Check them out, OptionPit.com. Join them live Thursday at 8 Eastern. Of course, we'll be back again later today, 2 p.m. Crypto Rundown. Back again tomorrow. Scott Nation is joining us for the second time. He liked it so much he wanted to do it twice in the hot seat. To answer your questions, you want to get at them, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club is the place to go to kick off your journey. We also have a special TWIFO, early edition of TWIFO coming up tomorrow as well. Things are all sorts of crazy this week. Then, of course, Double Dose of Education on Wednesday with Options Bootcamp and OPR. Then back again on Thursday for episode due of the Option Block. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>